Hi, welcome back to the second video about the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50D. As I mentioned in the first video, that is linked in the description below, um, the Evo Guide is a guiding scope and is a particular one. It is effectively an apochromatic doublet and has an helical focuser that is very precise, easy to operate, so it allows very accurate focus. It's a 242mm in focal length and 50mm in aperture. It's light, it's compact, and so you could think that hmm, maybe this could be an interesting scope for wide field astrophotography and you could think to have this sit directly on your Star Adventurer or Ioptron Sky, Sky Guider or, or even the mount, an equatorial mount if you want to do uh, wide field astrophotography. Um, Normally we don't bother with uh, a guiding scope for astrophotography because there are several problems. They are made cheaply because all they have to do is just follow a star. Uh, the focuser is not that great, the optics is not that great, the field of view is not corrected, so you have a strong field curvature. So none of these features are good for astrophotography. But the Evo Guide has great optics. A great focuser and there are two dedicated field flattener that we can use with it so you start to think you start to see where I'm going with this in this video I want to explore different kinds of astrophotography that we can do with the EvoGuide 50ED now before to start this is my EvoGuide is mounted on a 3d printed bracket from Astro Kraken I will put the link in the description below uh, and this is because I don't like so much the correlation rings that were, are supplied with uh, uh, guiding scope. I think that we may benefit for something for a re more rigid setup for astrophotography, and that's why I end up to, to to buy these brackets. They perform very well. They are fairly light, and here you have a mounting shoe, so that we can take a mini guide scope and go to guide a guiding scope. Isn't that genius? Okay, so let's see which kind of astrophotography we can expect to do with the EvoGuide 50D. In the video, in the previous video, I said that this guiding scope can be used as a grab-and-go telescope. It is fairly light, is uh, very bright, is f4.8, and uh, it can take 125 inch A pieces. So you could take this um, 32 millimeter plus A piece, uh, that is an Omni Celestron, you put on it the uh, stop ring that is supplied with the Evo Guide, that is because in this way you can achieve focus. Now you remove the rear cap. Now I have both a uh, metal rear cap instead of the plastic one for the uh, for, for the Evo Guide. Now you keep the 40 millimeter extension tube mounted, and you insert your eyepiece like so. You lock it in position, and this is the configuration to use the Evo Guide 50D as a spotting scope or as a telescope. Now the view is fairly bright and uh, what you can do next is to take a cheap phone adapter you mount it on your eyepiece like so and once that is in position you take, take your phone and you pop it in like so and you are ready to take photos of uh, whatever you are looking at with the Evo Guide. And so this is the configuration I use for the image that I'm going to show now. And uh, this is the latest conjunction between Jupiter and the Moon. I took it like, I don't know, two days ago, 22nd of uh, October 2020, in Brussels. You can see that I have some roof and the image is obviously flipped. And it's flipped both vertically and horizontally. This is not coming from the Evo Guide. This is due to the particular eyepiece I was using. Image quality is not great, uh, but that is not the fault of the Evo Guide. I was shooting from within my apartment through a double glass window that I didn't clean. There was clouds in the sky, and I'm in the center of Brussels. So 
uh, all in all, if you can do eyepiece projection uh, then in, in a better location, and not, through, uh, not shooting through a double glass window, then I expect this to, uh, the image quality, this kind of setup to be much, much higher than what you can see here. Now we're back, live, so let's remove this uh, eyepiece here, we don't need it anymore. Uh, we pass to a second way to do astrophotography um, with the Evo Guide. If you remove this 40mm spacer, then that leaves a 60mm back focus on the Evo Guide. That is enough to mount your DSLR camera. I don't have DSLR camera, I use Micro Four Third uh, mirrorless camera. So this is my EPL6, the same goes for the OMD, I'm, I cannot use the OMD because I'm filming with it. But the configuration is this one, I have here the adapter. Uh, this nose piece I can, can be removed or kept in place. If you remove it, you have to screw the adapter on the T2 thread at the back of the Evo Guide, else you can mount your camera as a normal eyepiece, you just slide it in and you lock in position with the uh, three thumb screw. Now the good thing of using the eyepiece, uh, the nose piece, sorry, is that you can use 125 inch astronomic filter with your camera. Um, that could be for uh, light pollution removal, that could be for, um, you, um, for nebula, imaging or can also be for um, improve the lunar contrast or things like that and also it makes very easy to orient uh, to change the orientation of your camera anyway this is the classic configuration of using the evo guide with a dslr camera or a mirrorless camera and with this configuration i took this photo of the moon the combination of the camera and the evo guide uh, is equivalent to having a 500 millimeter lens on a full frame camera so the size of the moon in the frame is not huge but yet you can steal quite a lot of details and if we are going to pixel peep what we can see is of, are of course the Maria we can see the largest crater as well as the, minus one, the minor one we can see central peaks inside some of the craters we can see mountain ranges and what we can see is the annoying uh, colorful line that we usually have around the edge of the moon and that comes from lenses that do not properly correct for chromatic aberration. The Evo Guide is a doublet, it uses uh, low dispersion glass and in so it's very efficient in correcting chromatic aberration. So that is a very nice picture of the moon and because it's a single shot image quality can only improve from here and also this is not been edited before with this configuration we can also take photograph of the sun the sun has pretty much the same apparent size of the moon that's why we can have total solar eclipse and we can use the same very same setup to image the sun just remember to use a white light solar cyst, solar filter that we can pop in front of the Evo Guide. Now in this configuration we can photograph sunspots like in the image I will show in a moment and also planetary tra transit so the transit of Mercury or Venus in front of the Sun. So this is an image, an image of the Sun taken with the Evo Guide 50 ED. The Sun you see here is still of course not huge in the frame you can already see limb darkening but also you can see if we are going to to look at the image 100% you can see here this little stain here is a sunspot is the sunspot 2776 that appeared on the surface around uh, uh, 16 of October uh, 2020 this, the estimated size of this solar spot is about the size of our planet so is not small but is not one of the largest you can see Yet, you, you are able to image such spot with the Evo Guide. If you want to peer further into the solar system, then DSLR camera, mirrorless camera, will not do the work. 
because the focal length of the Evo guide is, is very small, it's very short, it's 242 millimeters. So if we are going to use uh, our, our DSLR to image, say, uh, Jupiter, then we will not get anything out of it. So what we are going to do instead is to use a planetary camera like the ASI 224MC, that is this one, or the ASI 120MC uh, or MM, whatever you, you, you use. So what you have to do is to put back the original 40mm uh, extender at the back, we mount it at the back of the, uh, of the other guide, like so, and then you take your imaging your planetary camera and you put at the back like so we can mount it directly using a t2 the t2 thread so we can screw it on the back of the extender or we can use the nose piece that can make easier to use um, to use filters so with this setup he thinks is the evo guide is 242 so let me make a quick calculation the crop factor for the uh, planetary camera is about 7.3 so if we multiply that by 2.42 okay the, f the equivalent focal length for this setup is about 1800 millimeter so that is still quite small for um, for the planet so you could add a 2d a 2x barlow lens this is a Celestron XLLX uh, 2X. So what I do is that I remove that from here and I pop in the uh, finish to screw. Okay, and I pop in my Barlow lens and then the camera. So this is the configuration: Evo guide 40 millimeter extended to the parallel lens and then uh, imaging the planetary camera and with that I took the following uh, images of Saturn and Jupiter then you can start to get some interesting image of Saturn here is a single well this is the stack image but is not yet been edited so that's come from a video that I took with the Nazi 224MC using a Celestron 2X Barlow so that is quite nice and we can also look at Jupiter uh, again with the same setup you can clearly see the many bands uh, on the planet and you can also see here one two and maybe three moons around it and okay so this is pretty much all I want to say to photograph the solar system and all this you can do with the Evo guide as it comes. Um, there is no need to use a field flattener. But if you want to do some deep sky astrophotography, then you need you may need a field flattener. Uh, the first thing I tried to do was to take my micro photos camera, pop it in like so, and then go to image Andromeda. The image I got is this one. The Andromeda looks fairly nice, I like the colors, I like the amount of detail I have in the arms. The problem is that stars are round only at the very center of the frame. When you go toward the edges they start to elongate it and they go out of focus and this is the effect of the strong field curvature that is typical of all the um, spotting scope and also refractors that are not corrected by a field flattener. So this is expected. Uh, it is actually very bad as a, a field curvature. So is this Evo guide going to be good for imaging or, or, or not? Uh, this, if the field was flat, that would probably be my best uh, Andromeda so far. So you see that uh, despite using a small sensor, the micro third sensor, and having a narrow field of view, I was not able to cope and to uh, solve 
to remove the field curvature just by trimming the edge of the of the photo elongated stars were creeping into the frame quite deeply so that's clear that like that the evo guide is a big no so i took a decision that has not something to do with it. it has no something to do with the evo guide i live in the city i don't have a balcony or i have a very narrow very small one i don't see enough empty sky, empty sky to justify the cost for a larger setup with narrow band uh, for narrow band astrophotography so i decided to stay with the star adventurer invest in gas move out of the city and so keep the star adventurer as a portable setup but I still wanted to improve an image quality, so I decided to move away from the uh, Olympus Micro Four Third camera and get instead the, Z the ZW183MC Astro camera. This is not the Pro model for two reasons. The first is because uh, it's less expensive. And the second is because since I move into the field, I don't want to have a power tank that can power a 12 volt uh, cooled camera. So I was okay with the image quality that this AZ183MC could deliver, deliver, so I decided to go with it. And what I did was, okay, I just remove the microphone third camera, take my AZ183. Now you see that uh, supply with the camera, uh, you can find a T2 to 185 inch uh, adapter. So that allows me to have uh, filters like the Optolong L Pro or the Optolong L Enhance or whatever other astronomic filter in 1.25 inch mounted inside the camera and then I can screw the camera on the T2 adapter of the 40 mm extend, extension tube. This is a very solid and rigid setup and that will not create collimation issues so I was was quite happy with this possibility and I took a test I did a test session on SADR this is the central star of uh, the Swan constellation and uh, the camera has a one inch sensor size so I thought that now we are going narrow the field of view will be now we're going small the field of view will be narrow so uh, cor field curvature will be even less than an issue than what I had with the uh, microphone camera. Problem is, as you see in the image that I'm going to show in one second, curvature is still strong. I still have uh, a large area of the frame where the stars are not very, um, very round, like this part here, from here, inwards, all this part. You can see this corner here, the elongated stars, they creep in quite, quite a lot into the frame. Uh, I like how the nebulosity is shown. Uh, I like that I have a manageable chromatic aberration. So find that these are images I just stacked, calibrated and auto-stretched in AstroPixel processor. I didn't do any further editing because I didn't. W I, I really wanted to show you the uh, performance out of the box of the Evo Guide. So there is no further editing aside a standard stretching uh, done with AstroPixel processor. So there is no way that we can do astro deep sky astrophotography with the Evo Guide if you don't get a field flattener. Luckily for us, there are two available field flatteners that can work with the Evo Guide. One is a general purpose field flattener from Starizona, the Evo FF. The advantage of this um, of this field flattener is that it allow it leaves a back focus of 34 mm, which is enough for either use an astro camera in combination with a filter wheel or to use my mirrorless camera so um, if you want a flexible setup you have to get the study zona field flattener and the problem with it is that it's rather expensive it costs nearly as much as the evo guide itself the other possibility that is the one i chose is to use the new uh, Skywatcher field flattener that is dedicated to the EvoGuide. This is the EvoGuide 50ED field flattener. 
uh, it's uh, uh, double lens optics fully multi-coated and you use it in the following way this is going to replace um, the 40 millimeter extension tube so that part will not need it anymore so we directly screw the feed flattener on the back of the Evo guide like so and uh, this feed flattener is quite long so that's the main problem with it is that uh, you the, the, the available back focus is now 17.5 millimeter that's not enough to be used with a mirrorless camera it's not enough to use an astro camera with a filter wheel but what you could do if you don't care about filter wheels is to mount a filter in this way and then either with a cool camera or with a non cool camera like in my case you just screw it in and then you are ready to go now with this setup I took the following image of the Bachmann Nebula you see now that the field is very well correct, everything is flat, the stars are round um, I like the image quality I get on the nebula uh, here there is a bit of, uh, on the right, there is a bit of up glow that I didn't remove mind that this is my first series image with an astro camera, deep sky image with an astro camera so uh, it's still a working process but I think I could say that the, for the money, if you have the right equipment, then uh, the Evo Guide uh, can really be a nice wide field uh, uh, imaging scope for astrophotography. Now you can see that the uh, Evo Guide is performing quite well, and uh, this 252 millimeter with uh, and one inch sensor well you still need to guide it right so this is the main reason why I took this 3d printed bracket from Astro Kraken I can take my mini scope pop it in like so I'm going to fix it then take my planetary camera pop it in and now I have a wide field astrophotography setup um, that I can use on the Star Adventure because this thing is less than 2 kilo in weight even when you consider uh, cables and everything you don't arrive to 2 kilo and that I think is a good enough setup for um, deep sky astrophotography um, is that a replacement for something like the William Autic Red, Red Cut? the answer is probably not in the sense that uh, there are some limitations that you need to uh, to work with uh, if you are not okay with uh, not using your DSLR if you are not okay with using 125 inch filters if you are not okay with not having a rotator at the back of the instrument then you may want to, to move to the red cut which costs fairly uh, which, which costs much more than the Evo Guide plus uh, the field flattener. But that's a choice uh, you have to make. If you decide, for instance, to upgrade your camera to an Astro camera as I did, then the Evo Guide could be a very nice and affordable solution. You invest more in the camera, you invest less on the lens, yet you can, pr you can produce high quality deep sky images. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching.